everybody, welcome back to Just Plays, um, I almost said Just Plays Love Live, uh, Just Plays Exile Election. Uh, it's nearing 3am, but I'm still chugging along, cause I gotta get all these done before I leave tomorrow. So yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to the data room real quick, see if we have any new cards we can read, since it's a new day, and like, we have multiple cards if I re recall. Um... Nah. Okay, no new cards. Boo! <sighs> I mean, we have multiple cards. Come on. Alright, anyway, let's go to the Taya caps. Hi, Omedeto. Kaname kun tachi no kyo no lucky place wa. Okay, congratulations! Alright, Kaname-kun and the others, your lucky place today is... <gasps> ah, the Ferris Wheel! I thought we were going to the Taya Caps. Alright, well, I didn't want you to waste all of your time, so I figured you would eventually come to the Ferris Wheel. As usual... As usual, we all listened to Alice, completely fed up with her bullshit, and took our cards. <sighs> Hurry up and just give them to us. <laughs> What? Come on! God, you're such a drag! You could at least pretend to be excited! Would you be satisfied with it if I was just pretending? Well, I mean, if you did it well enough to fool me. Well, if that's the case, then I would decline. Did you forget that I'm your supervisor? I mean, think about it. Have you even thought about the fact that you are not accruing points? Uh, is there any point to accruing those points? Ah, <sighs> uh, fine. I mean, I'm trying to be as fair about this as I possibly can, so I'm trying to make it at least, you know, I don't, or so I don't plan on, um, so I don't plan on changing it too much. <sighs> Alright, and what exactly are you trying to do with this pointless conversation we're having? Uh, we're talking about how you could probably maybe let me feel a little bit of joy. If that's it, are we done here? Alright, fine. Don't forget to get your cards from the big Alice before you leave. Upon saying that, after Alice disappeared, the big Alice <laughs> appeared. The big Alice appeared in her place. She was hold holding the cards in her hand, but since we didn't want to incur a penalty for taking them by force, we decided to go ahead and hurry up and get on the Ferris wheel. Time to reuse that CG. I mean, we're oh sorry, <laughs> this is each guy. We're we're managing to collect the cards little by little, right? Well, we've got eight so far, and after this we'll have ten. Are you getting any info out of them? Uh, about the murderers? <laughs> the 
despite the <laughs> despite the soft music playing inside the gondola car, Ichika had decided to ask a rather <laughs> uh, ask a rather vicious question. Well, right now, I mean, I've exchanged all of them for info. So, uh, what do you know? Well, I mean, I don't have enough yet, but I, there are things that I have found out. Oh, no, it's fine, you don't have to say. Um, actually, it's probably better if you don't talk about it. Got it. Ichika wouldn't share any of the information about the murder with me. Or I wouldn't share any of the information about the murder the murders with uh, Ichika. She probably believed that it would give me more of a ch more of a reason to not die during a election. But sorry, Jess is stupid, so sometimes it happens. <laughs> if I thought about if I thought about what would happen after after I lost an election, I would probably share everything I possibly could. And I would think about how to save save Nori. And that wasn't just something that I was thinking myself. I didn't want to think about the fact that uh, Ichigo's own judgment may be impaired. Oh, but I mean, you are going out of your way to get all of them, so I can relax knowing that. Well, since I plan to continue the elections until the end, I guess I'll just continue to get them, same as always. Oh, speaking of that, what are we going to do with Nori-chan's cards? Nori, who had been staring out the window up until this point, reacted to hearing her name, and only her gaze turned to us. Yeah. Nah, it's fine for now. I mean, we probably have enough. I probably would have to borrow her cards eventually, but for right now, I just didn't really want to take them away from her. Nori I mean, it seems like Nori's enjoying collecting them. Huh, well, I mean, they are kind of pretty. Since Ichika knew why I was... <laughs> knew what I was trying to do by saying that, she didn't press it any further. Hmm. I would do it until the absolute last election. Until the last six were dead, my revenge was not over. Kaname? Uh, Kaname? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, listen, you don't have to think about that stuff right now. I mean, I know I'm the one who brought it up, though. When it's just the three of us, then you can just think about the three of us. Ichika still didn't remember about back then. And despite that, she still said the same things with the same expression and using the same words. What's wrong? It's nothing. With, 
Upon losing Misa, it just became the two of us. And right now, with Naughty added, there were three again. Having this new relationship made me a little bit... made me a little bit sad, but also kind of happy. Okay, we got E, and we got G. Alright, I'll be off soon. If that's the case, then we're gonna head back to the room. Yeah, would you? Alright, let's go, Nori-chan! The two of them held hands and walked away. Uh, and without thinking, I called after them. Oh, Ichika! What is it? Thanks. <laughs> Why did you say that so all of a sudden? So nah, no reason. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Ichika smiled as if she understood completely. Alright, I'll see you all later. See you later. Oh my god. I, I did something funny the other day. <sighs> Alright. And with that, a new three days began. And I would have to chase down a new person. And kill- to kill them. Alright, well then. Alright, uh, time to prepare myself- or er, bleh. So I need to change over my line of thought, I began walking. There was still a mountain of things I had to do. Hashtag relatable Kaname. Okay, cool. So we've got Shihori there. Uh, we've got all three of them down there. That's cool. Uh, I might date a room, actually. And then after that, I'll um, end this episode. We'll end this episode after two data rooms. And uh, then we will probably go hang out with Shihori and then the other three. Or I might make a save, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, scan my fucking cards! <laughs> Give me the cards! Yep, I do want to read it. Okay. Uh, who do I have that's new? Do I have new stuff for one of these people? your mom. Okay, we don't need unnatural things. I nodded. Yep. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. I have something else. Yeah, I read this. Oh, is it me? Is it us? <sighs> Ever since that day, something was off. Ever since the day when Ichika's mother suddenly died. That day, too, we lived our lives as though nothing had changed. And the day after that, and the day after that, 
and I just began to think that nothing would ever change. However, when someone suddenly dies, you it completely ruptures the life you've had up until then, and there's no way to get it back. The fun memories remain. I wondered if people were able to get to the point where they chased off all of the sadness or chased off all of the sadness and kept only the happy memories. However, that would take time. Especially for a death that wasn't completely accepted. It was a senseless, sudden death, and it would take a long time to heal. Seems like Dad doesn't want to eat today, so do you mind if I eat with you? Uh, it was about a week after, or that day was about a week after. A uh, week after the death. I was called to Ichika's house, and like that, and like that, we began eating together. We had always been together since since we lived next door. We had always been together since we were small. But but even though that was all, but even though that was our only real connection, since our since Misa's and my parents died early. Ichika and her mother had been like our real family. Although Misa, although Misa felt as though she were losing her family all over again, it was not comparable to how her true daughter Ichika felt. Although over time, uh, although over time we began to eat more with Ichika and she started to feel a little bit better, better, uh, Ichika's father never returned after that day. It wasn't that he was particularly bad or evil, it was just that anybody could see that anybody could see that she got along well with her parents. But I could feel I could feel the tension between them when I went over to eat. Since he felt a little bit weird about a boy around her age coming over all the time, um, but her mother seemed to be seemed to be perfectly accepting of it. It seemed as though there were a bit of distance between us. Ichika's mother very much was the center of their three-person family, and when she disappeared, the family was unable to stabilize itself.
but the truth was, Ichika's mother was no more. And from now on... Okay. And uh, since the night when her father left, it was something of a relief. Oh, okay, so there's more. Alright, that's what's the problem. Alright. I was like, what the hell? Where's the extra stuff? But it's there's a thing where it's like, do you want to read more? That's annoying! Ugh! Alright. Um... Since that night, uh, since that night when I had dinner with Ichika for the first time in a long time, she didn't go to school for three for three consecutive days, and then after that for about a month, I didn't hear anything from her. On the night of Ichika's second day second day off from school, Misa and I uh, went over and rang the bell at Ichika's house. However, there was no answer, and there were no lights on. We were worried about what would ha what had ha ugh. we were worried about the possibility of her being ill, but that wasn't the only thing. Uh, there was a there was a growing feeling of unease in my heart. I tried asking the school about it. And I had heard that there had been some sort of word from her father that she hadn't been feeling well and therefore was it therefore was at home. Since this was, even if she was sick, this was the first time I hadn't heard from her in a month. And, and it was strange that I, okay, and it was strange that I wasn't getting a response from her now. Hey, Mi-chan. Uh, let's try to go to... Let's try to go to Ichigo and Ei-chan's house one more time. Misa said on our way home after school one day. Since we had walked home with Ichika several times in the past... <laughs> several times in the past, this last month... As last month, we had been talking about mostly her. I thought that maybe if she wanted to be left alone, it would be best to not dwell on her. But if that was all right, best not to not to annoy her. But. But it would probably be best to hear that from Ichika herself. And... And it might be easier for her to talk to us since we had been through something similar. Got it. Yeah, why don't we go? But if she's not feeling well, we gotta make sure we go home right away, okay? I had tried to answer as if I, as if it was. I tried to answer this uh, nonchalantly, but Misa ended up laughing at me. Yeah, <laughs> you sure look happy. <laughs> I bet you really wanted to go, didn't you, Nichan? Ah, <sighs> you've been pretty lonely not not seeing not seeing Ichigo and Nichan lately, huh? At that point, our, my relationship with Ichika was solely that of childhood friend. Okay. 
However, it was pretty clear that we had feelings for each other, and we both knew it. It was... Since we, we had never said the words to each other, but it was clearly just a matter of time. I mean, I and Misa and probably Ichika too knew that. I mean, if that weren't the case, then I would find out soon, <laughs> soon after, but I wasn't able to take any sort of simple pleasure in that. And what happened after was the fault of one particular happening. If Ichika and I were going to reaffirm our feelings for each other, then we would, and take things to their logical conclusion, then we would have to accept the reality. Once we arrived at Ichika's house, we rang the bell, but of course there was no response. Mm, looks like they're not home. Misa mumbled worriedly, and then after that, she added as if she were ju ju had just remembered. Huh. Do you not think that they're just inside? Hey, Onichan, can't you hear something? Uh, mm, no. Can you not see it? Usually, it was my job to try and try and reason with Misa, but when it came to Ichika, I couldn't deal with that. Okay. I wanted to find her. That's what I had been thinking this entire time before we got here. And when Misa said that, it seemed as though she was creating a chance for me to act. This isn't a good thing, but since we're worried about each guy, I guess it can't be helped. Using that excuse, I decided to concentrate. I decided to concentrate on what I wanted to do. easy to tell if I could hear somebody talking, but as far as I could tell, I didn't hear the, anybody's voice. However, I could hear the sounds of things, sounds of somebody living there, and there were several different sounds, several different sounds related to daily life. Footsteps walking over the flooring. The sound of, the sound of clothing meeting the eating the cover of the sofa. Sometimes... I wouldn't even care if it was just the sound of breathing. Okay. Even though it seemed as though no one was home at Ichika's house, I could hear things after all. audio player, um, the humming of a refrigerator. If 
I was able to remove all of those, then I was able to... If I was able to remove all of those, then I'd be able to see the colors and figure out who was inside. However... Mm, looks like they really aren't home. Really? <sighs> I thought that this would be a time when your weird power would be helpful. Weird? <sighs> well, I mean, I guess that's not right, but hey, M Misa... Uh, Alright, well, where do you think they went? Even though I was trying- even though I was trying to act offended, Misa didn't seem to be- or Misa seemed to be just completely ignoring me and continuing. <laughs> and then, when she arrived at one of her guesses, I saw the color of fear enter, me enter Misa. Misa's words. You don't think... Maybe she's passed out in there or something, do you? Well, if she were, you would think her dad would notice. And what if her dad has also been taken out? Okay, well, I mean, we don't really have anything to support that. I mean, I guess it was possible. <sighs> Alright, hang on a second, let me try again. Okay. Uh, once again, um, Michka took the headphones and um, placed them on. I wasn't really all that interested in music, and it was just something that I had just happened to pick up. Um, and it, uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. and they were a little, and they were a little bit expensive. But since they were able to block out all of the colors from those, block out all of the colors from the, um, from the sounds of daily life that would cause me to get stressed out, they were worth the money. Even though I thought I wouldn't use them a whole lot at first, in the end it turned out to, that they were really useful. They could shut out pretty much everything, but it also had something where it could shut out, uh, where it could shut out just people's voices. If I used this, then it meant that even in places even in noisy places, I'd be able to continue to have a conversation with somebody. And once I realized that, it was my treasure. It was my most valuable treasure. My dad could do something like that. <laughs> so my dad is actually deaf in one ear. Um, he he used to be a welder back when he was when he worked, and uh, he was doing a job back when I was a baby, and uh, a piece of molten metal got into his ear and burned his eardrum off uh, and it's never, they've never been able to recover. Like, they tried to do, like, a skin graft and stuff like that, just didn't work. And, like, now he's older, so, like, his hearing's going anyway. <laughs> so, um, ever since I was a kid, like, my dad was always deaf in one ear. And, um, you know, so, like, the whole thing about, like, not being able to have a conversation in a, uh, crowded place and stuff like that rings really true for me, because I'm used to, you know, being around my dad. All right, be quiet now. Okay. Hey, come on, I'm being quiet. The same time that each, that Misa said that, you saying each instead of Misa. Same time Misa said that, uh, I once again concentrated. Just like voices, everybody's breathing was different depending on the person. When it came to Misa, hers was a slightly green, 
was a slightly green, light blue color, and Ichka's was a faint pink. Ignoring the ignoring the light, the light blue right nearby me, I searched for a light pink color. I would give it a little bit of time, maybe like a minute. That's what I had planned. And of course, I did indeed see I did indeed see Ichka's voice. But her voice was weak. And she wasn't talking to anybody. Okay. Such a, uh, such a. You see, you see, you see, you see. Um. Such a faint color would normally be overlooked, and it was only because it was only at that particular time that I was able to see it clearly. Ichika was calling my name. Okay. So it's possible that her dad flipped and did something. Um uh, did we read this one? Uh, it's possible that her dad flipped and did something to her, and it's possible she also tried to kill herself, possibly. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. For Ichika's father, her mother was the love of his life. Or, for my father, my mother was the love of his life. Um... Of course, he loved me as his daughter. But there's no way that I'd be able to overtake my mother. And I felt that deep down. It's not that it bothered me, really. Instead, I was actually rather proud of the, how well I got along with my parents. And, er, I was actually rather... In fact, I was actually rather proud of how well my parents got along. And I was really hopeful that someday I'd be able to have someone like that in my life as well. And so, my father was unable to stand the death of my mother. And since my mother's death happened so, happened so quickly, it was extremely sudden. In the morning, as usual, my father had headed to work, and I had headed to school, and after she had seen both of us off, she went out to go shopping, got caught, and got caught up in a traffic accident. She was parted with us because of a traffic accident, and I wasn't even able to hear what her final words were. Humans, al humans are aware that someday they will die. But it's always something that feels far off into the future. It always feels far off into the future. And the two of them were looking forward were looking forward to my future marriage and having grandchildren of going old together and celebrating their golden anniversary and going and going through all of those motions and enjoying a, a peaceful um, and enjoying a peaceful uh, peaceful lax life. My father had always thought of, thought the same thing. He always had thought that they would grow old together, and that he would die a little bit sooner than my mother.
would often talk about it, talk about it in the distant future to my mother while he was drinking. Since that was how my dad was, it wasn't exactly unusual to see him withdraw after my mother's death. And I tried to continue on as though everything were the same. And I did ev as, as though everything were the same, and tried to chase off my father's sadness as best I could. Back then, if I had realized, for example, if I knew what I knew now, then when I looked back on it, maybe I wouldn't feel so, I wouldn't feel so upset and regretful, and I wouldn't feel, all right, and I wouldn't feel as though I wanted to go back in time and try and change how things went. On that fateful night, my father was, my father was late in coming home. When he was in the house, he'd remember about my mother, and so lately, he'd been very late in coming home. I said as much to I said as much to Kaname and Nisa-chan, who had come over because they were worried about me. After I had at, well, I was cleaning up after I had made them dinner. Uh, it sounds like Dad's not going to eat today either. So go ahead and help yourself. Kaname looked at the wall clock. Uh, wall clock once, and then picked up his chopsticks. Got it. Alright then, I'm gonna dig in. Misa-chan, who was sitting beside Kaname, looked between us several times before finally nodding, seeming satisfied. Uh, yeah, me too. Up until now, my mother and I, and along with Kaname and Misa-chan, the four of us, and sometimes my father included, the five of us, would have dinner together. Or would often have dinner together. But... But during this week, thanks to my mother's funeral and everything that went along with it, we didn't have time to relax and have a meal. Having the three of us sit around the table like this made me kind of happy. When Kaname and his sister told me that they would be coming over after school, I had figured that I had figured this as much, and so I had made so I was glad that I had made enough food for three people. Is he always this late? Kaname asked without any sort of tact. Yeah, 
ever since then. I had trouble putting it into words, but ever since my mother's funeral, I couldn't really even bring myself to say it. Do you want me to try and talk to him this time? I smiled a little bit, since it seemed as though we were having some seemed as though we were having a conversation like a married couple. No, it's fine. He probably just needs time. Gotcha. I understand. Sorry. Misa-chan, seemingly the only person who understood why, why I had smiled. Okay. <laughs> um. Looked at me amusedly. Hey, come on. Go ahead. Eat up before it gets cold. I had always thought that I wanted to be I wanted to become a married couple like my parents. And since I couldn't think of any other any other eligible candidate except Kaname, I knew that he felt the same way. Okay. Gotcha. Alright guys. Uh, I'm gonna save for right now and I will see you next time. Bye!